This is Radio Nepal. I'm Gaushal Kimide with the news. The headlines first. Ruling Alliance reaches preliminary agreement on power sharing in government. First National Convention of Judicial Committee commences in Kathmandu. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dal Prachanda says Nepal's three-tier governance system is inspiration to the world. Nepal and China agree to fully open Raswagari Kerung border point and Russia signs deal to boost oil supplies to India. Now the news in detail. The ruling alliance has reached an agreement on the expansion of the Council of Ministers. Janta Samazbadi party leader Rajendra Prasad Shrestha said the meeting of the ruling alliance held at Balwatar yesterday made the agreement to expand the cabinet. Leader Shrestha said they agreed to allocate eight ministries to Nepali Congress, five to CPN Maui Center, two each to Janta Samazbadi party and CPN Unified Socialist and one each to others included in the ruling parties. Top leaders will make a final decision on the matter as soon as possible. Leader Shrestha also said the meeting also discussed the government's common minimum program. Meanwhile, the CPN Unified Socialist has decided to send Dr. Beduram Pusal and Prakash Jwala to the government from its party. Minister for Communications and Information Technology Rekha Sharma has said the government will get a full shape within a couple of days. Addressing a program organized to mark the 25th anniversary of Reporters Club, Minister Sharma said discussions in regard with inducting ministry ministers into the cabinet had neared the final phase and the government expansion was expected by a couple of days. The communication minister further stated that a bill regarding the transitional justice had been presented in the parliament as the government wished to conclude the matter at the earliest. According to the minister, preparations were also underway to formulate the mass communications law. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dal Prachanda has said Nepal's three-tier governance system is an example and inspiration to the world. Addressing the first national conference of the Judicial Committee organized by Kathmandu Metropolitan City yesterday, the Prime Minister said the country's system of federalism with a progressive restructuring would be crucial for justice delivery in the local levels. Prime Minister Dahal also highlighted the role of Judicial Committee to prepare the foundation of socialism as per the spirit of the Constitution. The head of the government also hoped that the justice delivery system through the Judicial Committee would help build people's trust on federalism and implement the Constitution effectively. More than 400 deputy mayors and Judicial Committee members across the country are participating in the conference, which started yesterday and will conclude today. The annual report of the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority, CIAA, has been submitted to the House of Representatives. In yesterday's meeting of the House of Representatives, Minister for Communications and Information Technology, Rekha Sharma presented the CIAA's annual report for fiscal year 2078-79 Bikram Samad on behalf of Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal Prachanda. Earlier in the House meeting yesterday, lawmakers drew the attention of the government to take concrete steps to address problems of the loan shocking victims and the country's economy. President Ramchandra Paudel has urged honorary consular generals and consulates from various countries to work keeping the interest of the nation at the center. During a courtesy meeting with the honorary consular generals and consuls who reached the office of the president at Sitan Nivas yesterday, President Paudel viewed that honorary consular generals and consulates were expected to contribute for strengthening the bilateral relations by promoting the interest of of the nation. Similarly, President Ramchandra Paudel observed the chariot procession of Machindranath at 9 p.m. yesterday. He also received the Holy Prasad. The head of the state reached Asan to conduct puja and receive prasad. 
the first meeting of the Nepal-China Coordination Mechanism on Border Trade and Cooperation was held in Lhasa of China's Tibet Autonomous Region yesterday. The meeting was co-chaired by Secretary of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Supplies, Madhu Kumar Marasini, and Executive Vice Chairman of the People's Government of the Tibet Autonomous Region of China, Chen Yongki. The discussion was focused on resuming the cross-border trade and people-to-people movement at optimum level and exploring new avenues of cooperation in border trade. During the meeting, the two sides agreed to f- have full operation of Raswagari Kerung exit and entry point for two-way trade and people-to-people movement from coming April 1st. Similarly, two-way trade via Tatapani Jangmu and passenger clearance from Yadi Pulang will be resumed from May 1st this year. Upon Nepal's request, the Chinese side agreed to consider setting up a multifunctional lab in Nepal-China border. The fourth edition of the bilateral dialogue between the Nepali Army and the United States Army concluded yesterday. According to the Nepal Army Directorate of Public Relations and Information, the dialogue which took place from March 27th was focused on continued cooperation in humanitarian aid and disaster relief, peace operations, training and expanding disaster management capacity, among other such trainings. The dialogue was led by Major General Asok Raj Sikdel on behalf of the Nepal Army and by Major General Christopher Smith, who is the Deputy Chief of the Asia-Pacific Command on behalf of the U.S. Army. The Nepali team comprised representatives from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Defense, while 22 representatives from the American team participated in the dialogue. The Pashupati Area Development Trust has urged visitors uh, to the temple not to carry plastic materials in view of increasing environmental pollution around the temple area. Issuing a notice, the Trust sought the cooperation from all to implement its decision to ban plastic materials on the temple premises. You're listening to Radio Nepal's ATM English News Bulletin. Time for a short break now. Bazu Darsan Bagiwani Babu Ramri Ipung Vani Hazur Ramri Pugi Uchai Miru College Co best friend Naste Bazu Naste Aunula Vitre Unsa Bazu Oni Dada Office Goys of Nubolai Umato Bianeo Unsa to be refreshed with the Gonuno Makana de Argor de Gorse Os Os Bazu Oi Wife Evolani Password Magna Eh Topani NTC Co Sosto de Pack Sotesani E Ora NTC Co de Pack Lina Asterix Soda Pondra has Dial Gorna Nepal Telecom Rastrako Sanja You're listening to Radio Nepal's ATM English News Bulletin. Now on to some international updates. Russia's largest oil producer, Rosneft and India's top refiner, Indian Oil Corporation, have signed a term agreement to substantially increase oil supplies and diversify oil grades delivered to India. According to the Economic Times of India, the deal was signed during a working trip to India by Rosneft CEO Igor Sechin. CEO Sachin, during his visit, uh, his Indian visit, met with officials from the Indian government as well as with the heads of some of the country's largest companies. Driven largely by a surge in oil imports, Russia has emerged as one of the top five trading partners of India. The UN Security Council has strongly condemned the continued heinous terrorist attacks targeting civilians in Afghanistan. In a press statement, the members of the Security Council expressed reaffirmed reaffirmed that terrorism in all its forms and manifestations constitutes as one of the most serious threats to peace and security in Afghanistan as well as in the world. The council members underlined the need to hold perpetrators, organizers, financers and sponsors of the acts of terrorism accountable and bring them to justice. An attack near the Afghan Foreign Ministry on Monday left at least six people killed and several wounded. Now, the general weather forecast for the country for today, according to the Meteorological Forecasting Division, the weather will be partly cloudy in the hilly regions of Kosi Province, Gandaki Province and Karnali Province, and partly cloudy to mainly fair in the rest of the country. There are also chances of brief rain or thunder showers at one or two places of Kosi Province, Gandaki Province and Karnali Province. 
With this, we have almost come to the end of this news bulletin. But before wrapping up, let's have a reminder of the headlines once again. Ruling Alliance reaches preliminary agreement on power sharing in government. First National Convention of Judicial Committee commences in Kathmandu. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dal Prachanda says Nepal's three-tier governance system is inspiration to the world. Nepal and China agreed to fully open Raswagadi Kerung border point, and Russia signs deal with India to boost oil supplies. Well, that's all the news we have for this bulletin. Our next bulletin in English will be at two in the afternoon. You can also listen to us online at our website www.onlineradionepal.gov.np. Keep listening to Radio Nepal and have a good day.